Hi, I'm Owen from REST Australia. Thanks for tuning in to the REST Network. Before we get into today's show, there are a few things we have to go over. Firstly, what you're about to hear and see is limited to general information only. It's not personal financial advice like you'd get from a financial planner. Also, it's important to remember that past performance is not indicative of future performance. That means that anything that's happened in the past, or we say today, is not necessarily going to reflect what happens in the future. Lastly, please consider that any of the guests or myself are featuring on this program may have a financial interest in some of the products or shares mentioned. That's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Kate Campbell, how you going? Good, Owen. Uh, welcome to this episode of the Australian Finance Podcast, the final one in our summer series. What are we talking about? Well, I don't really know, but Owen's going to be taking us through his vision board tool, which is his number one lifestyle hack for 2023. Yeah, so I don't, I'm don't. i not normally the hack person, yeah. am I? I'm normally like the, if I follow the crowd type thing, I'm the one that gets all the ideas from you. And then, well, actually this one did kind of come from you, so I can't really claim, have any claim to fame with it. But um, yeah, so we thought like, what's one thing that we can share in the countdown and the thing that we've spoken about already is this idea of a, a vision board, which you introduced me to. Um, and then I did a lot of research into it and I found out that actually a vision board is normally what teenage girls put on their wall. And I was like, hmm, okay. But anyone can do it. Like, that's just a, a little thing. Uh, you've got one, don't you? I don't think in the sense that you're talking about today, but I have maybe one year goals. One year goals. Okay. I don't have any pictures. Yeah. Uh, Maya Yoshi Sun, who's um, this fantastic venture capitalist, I think his fund is worth like $100 billion. Anyway, digression, but bear with me. I, he, he did a presentation not too long ago. He's like this big technology investor out of Asia. And he had this, when he was like, I think he was like in his single digits, so he was like younger than 10, he started to map out all the things that he wanted to do in his life and he broke it up by like decades. Mm. And- I just thought that was incredible because obviously he's like the unique case where things actually came true. Um, I was thought, there's no way anyone could plan for that long. And I always like, kind of like thought that this type of long-term planning was a bit airy-fairy, like it didn't have any substance to it. But now I realize that even just putting the ideas down moves you towards something. Um, so if you are watching the video version, um, Anik will insert some of the screen sharing that I'm doing. But it's basically, I use Notion for this. So I use Notion because it's a bit more intuitive than a Google document, but I have, for the sake of it, keeping it simple, I have included a Google Doc for this. So if you want to look at how it's done, you can just download the Google Doc or you can just play along. And it's very simple because I think we're both advocates for, Kate, keeping goals simple in mm -hmm. the sense of like just if you overcomplicate it, you end up probably not achieving a lot. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. I mean, in our other goal-setting episode, we did... I think the one we put out on New Year's Eve yep. last year yes. now, um, we talked about just trying to keep it as simple as possible and having potentially one short, one medium, and one long-term goal. And so that's something, they might be your financial goals, but you might also have goals in other areas of your life. So I think in this exercise, Owen's going to talk about goals that aren't just financial goals, but often the money plays a part in whether you can afford to take time off work to do it or afford to retire early or all these or sort of things. whatever it is, yeah. Um, the benefit of having Notion is if you create what's called a board, which kind of looks like a Google document on the face of it or like a Google document with a table inside of it, you can actually click on the things and it goes to like another document and that's like where you can click through. So, it's kind of like a half website, half Google Doc. So, then what you can do is if you do have these goals or these, these on your vision board, you have however you want to create it. You don't have to use this template, but this is just an idea you can actually then put prices or like savings goals alongside those. So, you can map it on and you can link it all back together. So, you can basically create this like gigantic financial plan depending on how complicated you want it to be. Mm. Some people like that. Um, or you can just have like a dollar sign next to it. So, you get a rough sense of when and how much and like when you could fit it in, I guess. Yeah. It's quite interesting with these because you're going to be talking about some goals that are decades away potentially. Yeah. Like I feel like the longer um, distance they are away from the current period of time, like the less fleshed out they are. So, like if I look at my goals, the ones that I want to achieve in the next few months, I've got action steps and they're quite broken down. Mm. But if they're 12 months, a little bit less broken down, anything beyond that is just kind of like, oh, yeah, these would be nice to work towards, but I don't really have concrete plans. Yeah. 
Exactly. If you're tuning in for this finance podcast episode, this is your first one, please go back and look at the summer series because this is probably less financy than the other episodes we've done, like where we talk about dividend stocks or savings or anything like that. Um, the summer series is, is heaps of fun. It's a great countdown. So go and check that out. But um, yeah, I mean, I really struggled with this process. As you know, Kate, like uh, 2022 was really hard. So I really struggled with this process of identifying um, what was important, like what was important to me. And, you know, everyone's like, oh, I just do what you want to do. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know what I want to do. Mm. Like, how do I start that process? Like, everyone's like, there's a lot of stray pops in the world, right? Like, there's a lot of people out there that are like, I feel like I can't be alone, that are like, I don't know. Like, I just do a lot of things out of anxiety or out of who knows, like, what drives me. Like, I really, it's like anyone's guess. Like, even my own, I don't know. So, like, like I can't be the only one, surely. And so, starting this process was bloody hard. Like, it was really hard. Yeah, especially if you're someone like you that lived, slept, breathed, everything work for quite a long time. Like, hadn't really thought about what else is there outside of that. Yeah. For my whole entire 20s, I feel like the focus, at least most of it, was like, uh, I won't get too deep, but like, it was like, I don't know, like to self-deprecate in order to achieve growing a business. And I probably wouldn't advocate that for most people. In fact, I definitely wouldn't advocate that for most people because it takes a lot. Like it mm. takes a lot out of you. So finding meaning and purpose is so important. And this is why I actually champion the FIRE community, even though I don't really subscribe to it myself. Um, I just think one of the things that comes from that is the meaningful things like intentions, uh, spending with intention, investing with intention, uh, finding meaningful work in your life finding meaningful hobbies like these are not really finance related things they're just more like like the behavioral and lifestyle and psychological things that are put before money money is the enabler to that and so yeah i mean we don't talk about this enough i think if you look at personal finance books written in the last hundred years um it's only the last 10 years when we've started to realize that behavioral economics behavioral finance is actually far more important than 20, save 20%, put 10% in super, like do this, like that stuff. Sure, it's great. It's important. That's the numbers behind it. But 90% of the work is actually the stuff that comes before that. So that's why I'm stoked to have this as number one on the list uh, in the countdown. So if you if you haven't done this yet, uh, I'd, I'd highly encourage you to do it, even if you've already begun investing, like I was investing for 10 years before I did this. So um, it's not like something that a new person does. Mm. It's not something that a beginner does. It's not something that a male or a female or whatever does. Everyone does it. Like, it's great. Uh, this is what we do in financial planning as well. We do goal setting. We talk about risk profiles and try and un- identify people's situation and their outlook. And I feel like this is a better way to create a financial plan. It's um, you can. It's like a DIY plan, really. So... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so how do we how do we get started on this process? I'm I'm going to share how I did it. I'm not saying that this is like the way to do it. There'll be psychologists, uh, coaches, life coaches, executive coaches that listen to this that will have a better idea than I do. So please write into us and tell us like, if you've got a template or something. Like, let us know, and we'll share that. Um, I will try and reference a Google Doc, but I'll try and refer- reference it in the context of the podcast so that you don't get lost. Um, so it's a very simple process, I think, once you see it in action. There's only four questions that you've got to work through, four, literally four questions. But this, this is what worked for me after t- toiling with it. Um, and by the way, you'll see Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> in the Google Doc because that's kind of like something that I always do. I just binge watch Disney movies whenever I get a bit bored uh, and it's just like, uh, like a happy spot for me. So that's why I put it in the Google Doc. Um, so the first question and this um is a very simple one that you can just think through now while you listen to the podcast and maybe i'll throw it over to you kate and ask you Mm. to go through this is what would your ideal tuesday look like bearing in mind that tuesday is most likely a work day can you describe it like what it would be from dawn till dusk Mm. or beyond getting up in the morning would you get up (laughs) early would you get up late would you sleep in like a little bit get up at six six yeah yeah, I do that half the time. It's uh, still a work in progress. <laughs> yep. I know I've, I've wanted to be an early morning person for years and I'm still only like halfway there, but cool. <laughs> we're working on it. Uh, go for a walk or do something like that. Have a coffee, actually make breakfast. Yep. Um, go to work. 
Were you uh, working from home or in the office? No, I would be working in the city. I do not really enjoy working from home at all. Yep. Uh, I like community and connection. I like seeing other people. I I don't want to go through any day without any inhuman interaction. Yeah, for sure. So whether it's just talking to someone at the coffee shop, at least some human interaction every day, um, I'd be I'd be doing what I'm doing now, like with mm-hmm. the podcast and all the education courses. Um, I'd be going to uni in the evening. Like I enjoyed doing Study. that. I'd yep. be studying uh, not every night, but maybe on a Tuesday, couple of nights a week. I keep looking at the dog you've put in here and I'm like, I would not be walking a dog. That would not be <laughs> part of my of ideal Get day. <laughs> um, ideally, I wouldn't be cooking in the evening, but, you know, we have to do what we have to do a few nights a week so we don't cost yep. a fortune. Um, and then, yeah, just be reading a book or maybe even going out with some friends in the evening. Okay. So and then hopefully going to bed by 10. Okay. I like it. Bed so pretty 10. much what I'm doing now. Yeah, perfect. That's great. I don't think I change too much. That's lovely. That's really good to hear. Um, I like it. So basically, this is the process that anyone can work through. Imagine it right now. Imagine where you wake up. What are you doing? What you know? Where, how do you get out of bed? What time? Uh, this is a work day, so think about that. What does your work day look like? Is it meaningful work? What are you doing? Who's it with? Where are you? Imagine it. Are yeah. you in an office? Are you on a job site? Are you walking through the bush because you do something with parklands? Like, what, what are you doing? Mm, would it help writing out what your current Tuesday looks like to then work out what your ideal Tuesday looks like? You could do that. Um, you, I would encourage you to do both, actually. Mm-hmm. But uh, in this, it, it's just more like if you only picked one. Like, I only did one. I yeah. just did what I want it to look like because then I can work towards that. Yours looks fairly similar, apart from the fact that you have animals involved. Yeah. So, actually, I've got it on my Notion board. Um so, my ideal Tuesday is a work day. It's waking up early, going to the gym for, or for a run, uh, coming back, showering, and having a coffee and breakfast while watching some business news, of all things. Yes, <laughs> that's me. Oh, yes. Um, then getting into a day of work, hopefully without much responsibility for others, because I don't, I don't think I'm good at managing people, um, but I'd have lots of impact for work, so meaningful work. After work, it would be nice to be able to spend an hour or two outside or around the house before having dinner and watching a show on Netflix. So it's pretty simple. Um, like working in meaningful work is super important to me. Uh, like uh, like most people it is, but I think most people don't prioritize that because they're scared to take the risk. Um, and then I would have to incorporate some type of like animals or something into my life outside, like nature, in some way, nature, um, because that's what I love. I just love it. Uh, so that would be there. And I think a lot of people don't actually just take even two minutes to write three sentences about what their day would look like, morning, day, and night. Now, the second question on this to try and help you discover this, and you don't have to do these in order because the third question is the one that will help you break a few of these things apart if you need help with it. Mm. So the second question is, what does your ideal Saturday look like? And this could be your Sunday, it could be your Wednesday, whatever day you have off, it's yeah. a leisure day. So, there you go. Okay. I'll throw it over to you again. I, oh, we didn't plan I to, this. I have to go first again. Okay. Do you want me to go? <laughs> you should go first. Okay. I'll go first we'll while you swap. think of yours. Um, so, my ideal Saturday is waking up easily without an alarm, which I tend to do anyway. Maybe going for a coffee or brek- brekkie in like the, the town. In or, the town. In the town. <laughs> in the village. <laughs> in the town I'm staying that weekend. <laughs> Where, the French town. No, it would be here in uh, Australia. Um, or just having a coffee from home, have some brekkie from home. Hopefully the day would be a bit sunny. I remember Sophie, our uh, former designer, would say she's 30% happier when the sun's out. And I agree. Like It's um, it's nice when the weather's nice if, you, if you're outside. Then I'd probably run some errands and work around the house being productive. I'd ideally spend the Arvo getting out with friends. So maybe it's like a coffee catch up, a lunch, birthday party, or something like that for someone, or getting something done outside. So, like our woodwork, got like um, working on a motorbike or a car, like I love tinkering, you know that. Uh, going fishing, playing footy, whatever. A Saturday night uh, out uh, with friends or family, or even just watching a movie at home. It's my favorite way to end the day. So, um, that's pretty much it. Maybe you would squeeze in like reading a little bit of a book in there, but um, I wouldn't push myself to do that. So, that's my ideal Saturday. You can see it's kind of like getting out and about. And these things change, right? Like when you have kids, things change. Like when you have kids, it might involve more family activities. So, taking them to sport, 
um, if you want to do that, of course, you don't have to have kids. Um, but that's if, if that's what you want to do. Like, that's where it can evolve to. And as you get older, you know, you get into your 50s, 60s, 70s, you still should do this activity. Like, what do you want? A lot of people get to retirement and they're like so lost. Well, it's just, it's just because it changed. People change. So, mm. yeah, that would be it, Kate. Okay? Yeah. I think for me, I'd get up and go for a, I like doing a long run on the weekend. So... I would do that first <laughs> before yep. coffee or food, mm-hmm. um, come back and if I go for a really long run, I kind of like treat myself and buy a croissant and then oh, at bread home related. make a filled croissant with oh, um, filled croissant. egg and bacon. Ooh. So I feel real fancy when I do that. <laughs> That's the one thing I can cook where I'm like, okay, I can actually cook something. Um, most of what I cook is kind of uh, not that complicated. Yep. Okay. And like uh, then... Often I do some study in the morning. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if that's ideal, but I don't what, always enjoy do it want? at the time, but I want the goal overall. I want to finish the Juris Doctor. So sometimes when you're doing it and you're just having, it's a beautiful day and you're having to read cases for hours and hours, you're like, oh, why am I doing this? But when I look holistically, I know that's what I want to do. Yep. So I think many people have goals like that where they're like, in the trenches, it's not as fun, but overall- you actually want to achieve it. So sometimes you have to put up with a bit. Oh, you do. Of course you do. Yeah. I think with one of the, the exercise with this, right, this is your vision board. Do it as you want to do it. Do not let anyone or anything or any shoulds come between you and this. None of that. This is not about that. This is not about putting the thing that is the right thing to do on the page. Please do not do that. This is like your own little safe space to put whatever the freaking hell you want to put on this document, you put on there. Because you might not do it. It's that, that is not it's not to try and do this. It's actually just to try and visualize it and understand who you are a bit. Mm. So if you want to have 10 pieces of cheese in a croissant or have 10 croissants with 10 pieces of cheese in it, you put that down. <laughs> but that's what you want. You do it because, yeah, it's your ideal day. Like, what are you going to do? Be careful. Too much cheese can end badly. Uh, I will just yes. provide that disclaimer. Obviously, you don't want to do anything and you don't want to do anything unhealthy or anything that's like not just unhealthy for you, but unhealthy for other people. Yeah. But there are like different dis- definitions of that. So, um, take it take it as it is. Yeah. And I think um, in the afternoon, I love having an afternoon cup of tea with somebody, whether it's my parents or some friends, mm-hmm. just something chill. Like it's usually the lower cost activities that actually just spending time with people, whether it's a barbecue dinner or uh, having friends over to my place for tea or coffee that I like the most. And then maybe just chilling and reading on the couch I'll have one day. That would be nice. Don't you have multiple couches? Uh, I still don't have the couches. It's been (laughs) six months, but uh, hopefully (laughs) the time this episode goes live, because we are recording in a little bit of an event, I will have a couch. Wow. Impressive. I like it. It's good. I like it. So really, both of those, I think like I just described my current Tuesday and my current Saturday, but I'm pretty happy. If you write it down though, what you'll realize is there might be one little tiny aspect of it that's missing. Mm. Or there might be one tiny little thing that you do now that doesn't align with this. So asking yourself why. And those little Mm. tiny little bits, you're like, I could just tinker that tiny little bit. And it's, it's good. I think if you do this exercise and you realize that it's very similar to how you spend your time now, Give yourself the biggest pat on the back. Like, seriously, give yourself a high five because you're doing what you want to do. And that's fantastic. Like, it's wonderful. That's the ideal outcome. Mm. So, yeah. Now, okay, what happens is a lot of people, like me, I couldn't answer this question. I didn't know what, I didn't even know where to begin. Like, I don't know what my Tuesday looks like. I don't know what my Saturday looks like. I don't know any of that sort of shit. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So, um, so how do you get to that? Like people are like, oh yeah, ha- true happiness is aligning your higher purpose with your everyday. I'm like, what's my higher purpose? What is my everyday? I don't know any of these things. I don't know. Most people would know what their higher purpose. Yeah, is. like it's like your intention or your view of the world, right? And I'm yeah. like, I don't know. And this is what like life coaches and leadership coaches and all that sort of stuff talk about. And I'm like, I don't know. But they have activities, obviously, uh, to break that down. And one of the things that you can do, and this might sound simple, but it is simple for a reason, and it works. Um, is you just get two columns, and this is so. This is like the third piece of the puzzle. You just get two columns, and you could do this first. By the way, there's no right or wrong order to this stuff. So you did it first in your case. Or? I actually did the other two first, but okay. I probably 
I went back and tinkered those based on what this was. Yeah. So this is like, that's why you put it in a Google Doc or a Notion and not necessarily on a piece of paper because you can, this will change. Um, now, so what I did was, it was pretty simple. Um, I think it was my site got me to work through this. Is you have likes in one column and dislikes in another column. It's really simple. Likes, dislikes. Um, so for me, fresh air, building things, coffee, nature. Uh, dislikes, noisy places, being in a crowded space. Um, like I like restaurants and cinemas and all that sort of stuff, but I don't like, like I've never been one that goes to a pub because I just don't like being around a lot of people all the time. Mm. It's not like I'm, like I'm not weirded out by it. Some people are, which is fair enough, but I'm just like, I'd just rather not be there. I'd rather just be walking the dog through the park or even just bushwalking. Like I love that serenity. So that's me. That's who I am. Um, I do not like micromanagers. I just, it's just like at work, I just do not like micromanagers. Um, the final thing I don't like is pollution. Like I don't like seeing rubbish. I don't like that sort of thing. Um, there are many other things I don't like. These are just some of the things. And you might find that when you do this activity, you can only come up with a few dislikes at first. That's fine. The easiest way to come up with a dislike, by the way, is just to invert the like. So you like fresh air? Well, you don't like pollution. <laughs> You know, so you like building things? Uh, well, maybe you don't like breaking things or something like this. I don't know. Mm. You like coffee? You know, maybe you don't like some other thing that's like food related or drink related. Yeah. And it's very simple. So, what, what would be some things that you like? I like running. running? I like I'll put that movement down. and getting outside and running, Got walking, it. walking, hiking. I like having long chats one on one with friends and Conversations, family. Conversations, yep. I'm, I'm probably more of a one-on-one -on -one kind of person than a group person. One I find groups are a bit more challenging. Um, I do like pushing myself out of my comfort zone. You do. That's very true. Anyone who meets you would know that. <laughs> yeah, Challenging like, yourself. I, Even though I'm very scared before doing it, I feel quite good that I have I did the thing and I learned from it. Um, what else? I love learning new things. I love reading books. Learning. And study. And I like working with people on Books. projects. Books and reading. And projects. And tea. I love tea. Tea. <laughs> you not forget the tea. Okay, so now the harder one for most people, most people find this harder, is what do you dislike? So you mm -hmm. said, what was it before you don't like large groups, was it? Yeah, or I like think it's that's not just that you don't a, like it, you just pre have a preference yeah. not for that. I like, yeah. So it's just like, yeah. But then I think that's also that's a good challenge as well. I just wrote large drinks. <laughs> what I meant to say was large groups. <laughs> well, I do like large cups of tea. <laughs> yeah. uh, what else? Um, being inside the I'm, entire day? I'm actually going to write that down, large cups of tea, because the more um, like visual you can make this exercise, the better the outcomes will be. Yeah, and I mean, you could do what Owen's doing right now. Instead of writing the words, you could actually find images for this, and you could use something like Canva. They've got lots of stock images and you could um, just have an A4 page in Canva and start dragging images yeah, into yeah. the likes and dislikes column if you're a more Canva's visual free, person. Yeah. Or even um, do a voice memo on your phone if you want to talk through this. It might be something that you do while you're walking. You could do it right now. If you're walking and listening to this on your phone, just get out the notes app and just start it. Yeah. Just so it doesn't have to be fancy. Like this is not fancy at all. Um, so I've got one thing for you in your dislikes column, large groups. Uh I feel like I also dislike being addicted to things. Like vices? Vices. Like when I feel like I like can't do anything like but watch TV in the evenings or yep. things that I try to overcome. Yeah, staying vices. inside all day. <laughs> staying inside all day? I mean, I like watching TV, but then I don't feel good if that's all I've done in my evenings for the week. Like I know that Let's about myself. Let's dive into this. <laughs> Why don't you feel good? I just feel like I know I love doing all these things like talking to people and reading books. And so if all I've done in the evenings for seven days is watch TV, I actually don't feel very good about that. I don't feel like I've had connection. I don't feel like I've learned new things. So yeah, yeah, uh, fair enough. yeah for me, it's just like TV is okay. nice, but I feel like it can become a crutch to me. But you don't, so you don't, you're not good with moderation with these types of things? No, I yeah, was talking okay. to Monique yesterday about that. Yeah. She said she's very good at self-control and yeah. uh, I don't. So, for me, it's either no TV or all the TV. <laughs> so, I have to do no TV quite a lot. Yeah, fair enough. Large groups, vices like TV. Yeah. Staying inside all day. What else? Um, eating unhealthily because yeah. I do it and then I don't feel good. 
and my body doesn't feel good. And then I just get annoyed at myself because I caused the problem. So <laughs> Those mac and chips last night were all good though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I don't like drama. Fun. I don't like drama. So I try to not put like myself in situations where I get involved in too much family drama or friend drama or work drama or anything like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Well, that's a good list. So when I first did this, I think I only got to like two or three dislikes. Like it was really hard. So for me, um, you've, you've, yeah, you've done really well. Yeah, I, I guess I've kind of worked on a lot of the things I dislike. So there's not too many things that I do dislike in my life or I'm doing something about it because I'm aware of it. But I think if you haven't thought of it, it might take you a while to come up with what you dislike. If you're not aware of it, it's just something that just annoys you constantly. Well, I think oh, I want to be very stereotypical here. I think a lot of females are more introspective than men like they indulge in that more than men so i would just say there's nothing wrong with it like it's yeah in fact why would you go your whole life not thinking about these things and being honest with yourself mm, it's interesting what a waste. i think i am quite introspective because when i was in the air force every week as part of the officer training course they made us do something called a critical self-reflection and we had oh, to pick cool. a scenario from the week and like write a whole page up on what happened in this scenario, like describe every single detail, what went well, what didn't work well, how could we have done better, how could we have managed our emotions better, how could we have interacted with other people better or said something differently. And like you really had to examine every single detail of a specific situation. And so that probably got me really got deeply going. thinking yeah. about what happened. So I'm very, I think I'm often self-reflective and I'll often go, okay, this happened, this happened, we'll learn from this. So yeah. I think that's stuck with me ever since. Yeah, fair enough. That's good. I like that because it means that, um, yeah, it, it just means that you're willing to confront it, which is great. Which I know was hard for a lot of people there. Yeah. So I'm just going to quickly do the exercise here where you look at the things that you like running, walking, one-on-one uh, -on -one time or one-on-one -on -one, like, conversations. You've got challenging yourself, learning, study, books, projects and large cups of tea. And then if you go back up to what your Saturday looks like, you've got all those things. Um, maybe the thing that's missing, well, you've got study there, I guess. Uh, and then in your work day, you've got everything there that you probably want, uh, which makes sense. No, you're looking basically to see if your likes and your dislikes align with that those first statements. Mm. So that's interesting. Like once you've done step three about your likes and dislikes, going back to step one and step two and going- Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I did the what came to... Because it's often like you'll put in step one and two what comes to the top of your mind. And normally what you do is you default to the things that you do already. Yeah, which I think I've defaulted to, so... Yeah, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Then you go to the dislikes and likes, and you come back to it in a week and you see what happens. Yeah, and this is probably something you should do over multiple days as well. I, I started my my ideal Tuesday was not what it is now. Like yeah. I think it had like three or four major iterations in the first week or two. So the idea is that... You're looking to spot anomalies. Like you're just like thinking like that doesn't make sense why that would be there. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay, so. So what are we going to do with all of this information now? <laughs> Done all this deep reflection. So now the point is just to put it into some sort of schedule. So the step four is like you align the likes and your ideal days with, um, with your goals. And that creates your vision board. Um, so vision board initially is it's supposed to take its name from less text, more vision. So like visual stuff. So that's why you have like the teenage girls example is like um, most have photos with their friends or like holiday destinations or those types of things. Guys would have the vision board in the sense of like back in the day, show my young fellas probably had like Eminem on their wall or like motocross riders or know, very, very typical here or like singers or people like that on their wall. Uh, and that's your version of a vision board, right? And so... What I would say is like basically we're doing this now as adults and we can use a lot of that stuff. But most of us, as we get older, we, we're kind of like okay to just have like a simple document or something like this. So I've just uh, aligned it. This is uh, the feedback I got from my, I think it was a cycle or life coach or one of them said, um, just instead of trying to have like all these abstract goals, like go and do, I want to live on a farm or I want to travel to New Zealand or I want to meet someone or I want to have kids or whatever it is. I want to have, you know, I want to reach financial independence, whatever. Instead of just having all these things just out there, you have to have some sort of ordering system. 
so you can re realign them. So for me, that's like 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. You just put it in a very simple order. Mm. Um, and I even moved some things around yesterday, actually, in my vision board. Like I, I reallocated where they go. Like I thought one of the things that I wanted was a four-day work week. One of the things that I realized that I love doing is actually like work. I like meaningful work. So for me, I realized that I probably wouldn't be doing anything different than what I'm already doing. So I don't feel like I need, I didn't feel like I needed to cut down to four days. So for me, I originally had that in my 30s column, but now it's in my 40s yeah. because that would be an option later in life. Um, and in, I'll just give you some examples of things I've got in my 30s. I've got run a marathon in under three and a half hours. I've done one in four and a bit, so I'm, I'm pretty slow. <laughs> but, uh, but So that would be like a goal for me. Um, have two kids, buy a farm and go to Europe. I actually haven't been to Europe, so um, I'd love to do that because I started the business and it took everything. So I didn't have time to do that in my 20s. And so then you'd have like, what do you do in your 40s? What do you do in your 50s? And again, what we're trying to just do is we're trying to make sure that these goals are aligned with what you want, not what you should do. Mm. Like it's not about shoulds. It's not about whatever. I just think there's such a big trap with people getting caught up in working in a job they don't really love, in being around people like friends or family they don't really like, things in their day that they don't really want to be doing and it's not a, it's not until you do something like this where you realize hold on a second none of that stuff makes any sense like why am i doing this and so this is a chance to put it all out there and be like well you know i'm in my 30s or well you know i've just turned 50 what am i going to do in the next two decades it might be retirement it might be a, tri a trip here or supporting grandkids it could be whatever yeah and I think bucketing it into decades helps because, yes, we want to do potentially all of these things right now, but we often don't have the time or we've got commitments or we don't have the finances to do these things right now. And yeah. sure, we won't live forever, but most of us will live for many, many decades to come, um, all going well. Yeah. And so thinking about how you can go, okay, what am I going to do from 30 to 35 and 35 to 40 and how can I spread the things I want to do into areas where they'd make sense because some of these things they're fine you could do in your 50s you can go on the the antarctic cruise in your 50s but you might not be able to run the marathon as yeah. well in yeah. your 50s it might be harder i did see some, some amazingly crazy runners out there. yeah but yeah i get, I get older runners. but yeah you get the point there's things that you can do now in your 30s that maybe you can't do in your 70s and so bucketing them into decades gives a bit more of a structure and i really liked I mean, you haven't read the book, but you're kind of just doing what Bill Perkins talked about in Die With Zero of um, putting these experiences you want to do into decade buckets so they make a bit more sense. Um, this whole board, th this whole board, the whole point of it is regret minimization. Mm. Because to that, to the point there, to the 4,000 4, weeks book, there is only so much you can fit in your life. You're not going to be able to do everything. So you will start by doing this thing and you will put like a gazillion things in this table and then you'll go, oh, I'm not going to be able to do all that. Yeah. So which ones are the important ones? And they'll bubble to the top uh, or they'll shift around. You know, like I, I don't actually have it in this Google Doc example, but I've got it on my actual board. It's like get to Everest Base Camp. And the reason why that's in there is and it was actually quite interesting. I just thought that was the most ridiculous thing I could possibly do. And I was like, <laughs> Well, once you showed me the airport, I agreed. It is ridiculous. <laughs> but then I was like, actually, I did all the numbers and I was like, oh, it's only like I could get there back and for a two-week holiday for about ten to $12,000, which I thought was reasonable considering that that's like on my vision board is one of the things yeah. I want to do in my life. I was like, I could do that. Yeah. And you know how you get this? So, you know what happens once you get to this point? There isn't, I haven't done the fifth step in here, but there is a fifth step. But I think, I think we covered a lot of that in our goal setting episode which I'd encourage you to go back and listen to. Uh, once you get these things on your board, it's a very, very simple process. You have these things on your board and if you're a Notion, you can click into them and there'll be a separate page for each of the things like run a marathon. Well, what's the thing you're going to do right before you achieve this thing? So let's use the marathon example because it's quite uh, It's visual. already in progress as yeah. well. Yeah. So in running a marathon, um, 
before you run a marathon, you probably want to train. So I'd highly recommend it. I yeah. saw a lot of ambulances taking people that hadn't trained the other day off to hospitals. So, so the train. first the first thing you do if you want to achieve a marathon in under three and a half hours, you'd probably want to like it could be as simple as where you got to go to the race. So where's the race going to be? It's probably going to be in Melbourne. So the first thing would be like you go to the event space. Yeah. Then you know what would you do before that? Well, you'd probably have a good night's sleep. But what would you do before that? You'd probably train for the week leading up and eat healthily. What would you do before that? Well, you'd probably want to attempt running a marathon in four hours. And what would you do before that? Well, you're probably going to do three quarters of a marathon in four hours. And what are you going to do before that? And you just keep working back and back and mm. back until eventually you arrive at today and you see this pathway to your goal. And they don't need to be big, meaningful steps, but they're just like big, obvious things. They can just be little steps along the way. And that is the basics of goal setting. And we went through that by saying you have short, medium, long-term outcomes for goals. Yeah. Um, you can do that with all walks of your life. So if you want to work towards a four-day week, well, how do you do that? You start with making sure you can work a five-day week <laughs> and then you start by going, okay, well, in order to work four days, I probably need to take some of this off my plate or I need to get into this position. So then you work, okay, what's the immediate thing before that? Well, maybe you're working four and a half days or maybe you have an RDO, like a one day off a of fortnight or something like this. Uh, so you negotiate that. You have a conversation. You set a plan um, and you just work backwards. And the whole point of this whole discussion, Kate, it sounds like it's not finance related, but here's the rub. What on earth is the point of saving money if you don't know what you're going to do with it? What is the point of investing if you don't know what you're going to do with money? Mm. What, it, there's no point. Yeah. And I think this, having that vision board laid out in front of you goes, okay, this is why I'm investing for multiple decades. This is what I want to do with the money that I'm working hard to invest and save and do various things with like you, money's only worthwhile because you can convert it into other things you want in your life. Yeah, it's just well, that's why we call it currency, right? It converts into things. So mm -hmm. it converts into activities that you can do, experiences that you can achieve, spending time with family, whatever it is that you want. But most people just skip this step entirely and they go straight to saving money. Yeah, and I think also doing this helps you work out what's enough because a lot of people, well, we're like, we need to know we need to invest, but what is that end point? Do we need $2 million in, in our FIRE portfolio or something like that? And so having this visualized, you're like, okay, the goals I have, they're going to be a bit expensive. So I'm going to have to start saving and investing more in my 30s and 40s so I can make sure I can achieve the things I want in my 50s and 60s, but also achieve the things I want in my 30s and 40s. Yeah. You know, Kate, we, you've, you've now, cause you, you, you've now met billionaires through what we do, right? Like people that are worth a billion dollars on mm. paper. They're pretty normal people. Yeah, they're really normal. There's like this mystique. They're like, oh, they're billionaires. Like Monique's met a few too now. We are very fortunate to have met these types of people. I tell you what, there's absolutely no difference between them and everyone else. Yep. They have very similar conversations. Yeah. They talk about kids, what they did on the weekend, their favorite coffee shops. Yeah. You wouldn't even pick them out on the street. Yeah. Most people aren't like Elon Musk. Like you don't- That's- yeah, that 99% yeah. of them are not that. They're just normal people going about their business and all the other shit that you see on Instagram and uh, on, I shouldn't isolate Instagram, but like all the other things you see in like the, the Australian Financial Review about the rich list on the Forbes rich list, that's just crap. There's no different. And I'd say as a whole, they're no happier and no less happy than the rest of us. Yeah, they have same problems. Yep, same problems. Um, and... So if you use goal, uh, money as your motivation, that is okay. It is okay. I'm not going to discredit that. I think it's perfectly legitimate that you might have money as a goal. I have money as a goal. Um, but in it of itself, it probably won't bring you what you want because it's just a conversion to something else in life. And so having this is the chance to sit down and be like, why do I listen to the Australian Finance Podcast every week, but I still haven't done anything about my finances? It's probably because you haven't done this. Mm. It's probably because you haven't found the meaning in it. Because this gives you the why. Because even going back to our goal setting, like why are we setting these goals? If you have some of these written down, uh, even if it's just something in the next six months or the next 12 months, that gives you something, a why behind what you're doing and why you want to improve your financial future. Absolutely, it does. So please go and get download the Google Doc, work through the exercise. If you've already got it on your phone, just convert it into a Notion board or Google Doc or somewhere where you can go back and you can revisit it. Even the it. notes app on your phone. Like, yeah, just do it anywhere. Whatever you're going to actually do and look at, just do that. Yeah. And um, just check in on it. 
You know, you don't have to do it every year if you want to. You don't have to do it that often. Like, don't feel pressured to do it because it's not the point. Do it when you're ready. Um, but there's a, it's really four questions. So if you just go in, it would probably take you five minutes if you wanted it to. Like, it would honestly take five minutes and then go back and visit it again. Mm. Um, if Just in case anyone does get the Google Doc and they're like, oh, can we please have access to this document? You just click file and download. Like, just... Yeah, make your own copy. <laughs> make your own copy because everyone messages us, can I have access to the Google Doc? You're like, yeah, just press file and download. <laughs> yeah, or file, make a copy or whatever it is on your yeah. system. Yeah, <laughs> just get it that way. Um, but, Kate, this is a great way to knock off the summer series... By now, you would be back from Europe, I'm, I guess, I'm guessing. Yeah, unless I decide to stay for unless some reason. Like, <laughs> never come back, post no, over a microphone I'm coming to back. I've got uni and other commitments. So Yeah, right. Well, we'll be back in Australia when you listen to this. Owen will have finished fishing. Yes. And uh, we'll be back with some regular programming next week. Yes, we will in the next week. So, thank you for tuning into the summer series. And thank you to Kate for putting it all together. Um, with all the edits from Monique, you guys are amazing. Um, it's been a, it's always fun doing the summer series because you get to like actually like structure things and it's, it's heaps of fun. So well done. Enjoy your trip or hope you had a good trip depending on when you <laughs> listen to this. Um, but as always, thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening, everyone.